I, I really just wanted to see if I could sell it with the defects. And Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. Welcome in, everybody. I'm going to be talking to you about my big money bolos that I sold on eBay. Items that I bought cheap and sold for a profit. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. So let's go ahead and start with the first one here. And this is a brooch. And I want to say that this came in a big batch of jewelry that my husband picked up for me. And I just looked at it and I'm like, it's not perfect. It has lots of issues. I mean, it's missing a rhinestone here, but there just seemed to be something different and unique and special about it. And it looked really old on the back. Now, I, I really just wanted to see if I could sell it with the defects and the problems. And I wanted to see if I could sell it for big money. So you can see here, I started uh, the listing at 175. I put it on sale 35% off at 113.75. And I took a best offer, which I'm going to tell you in just a second. But I want you to look at the yellowing here. I did not clean this thing at all. It will probably clean up some but there is a lot of issues with this item. So what I did is I just did extreme close-ups of every part of the brooch. I've got the measurement here. I put missing a rhinestone and has discoloration. Brooch looks to be very old. Please use Zoom. Okay. I ended up taking a best offer of $85 on this one and it sold pretty quickly. So I just want to show you that defective brooches do sell for big money, $85. So really, really a uh, cool find. And again, I think that came, I think my husband found this one for me. So very, very cool find. And I don't think he, you know, I think it was just with a bunch of other stuff. All right. Here are these Pokemon plush, uh, their toy factory. And to me, it's a mixed lot of plush. Here they are. And this one I picked up at a garage sale for $10 for all of them, sold them for $52 and the buyer paid shipping. And this one was purchased by Pinky's secondhand shop. And she has a storefront where I bet she's probably going to sell these. So thank you so much for your purchase, honey. All right. Here is another big money bolo. I don't do a lot of clothes anymore, you guys, but when I see something that is old and vintage like this, um, there was an, it was an, I, I'm sorry, I can't talk. It was a living estate and I got tons and tons of vintage clothing and I sold most of them on whatnot. And I had, I don't know, two, three, maybe four amazing vintage clothing shows. And I know if you came to those shows, you guys got some amazing deals. But I did. Um, what I was doing first was I was listing some of the stuff. And I was like, I hate listing clothes because I have to lay them out. I have to take measurements. And I used to be a full-time clothing reseller. That's all I did. But then I decided I'm just going to bring this stuff to whatnot. So that's what I ended up doing. But some of it is still on... Um, eBay. And I've got some other dresses that I listed, but I just decided it was, it was too much. So this is one of the items that got listed before I brought it all to whatnot. If you guys aren't following me on whatnot, definitely come over. I am Bolo Buddies over there and it's lowercase, all one word. And I mostly sell jewelry now, but I do mix in hair accessories, toys, vintage Christmas I've done. Um, I've done vintage clothing. I have all of the clothing sitting in that closet that is new old stock that I really should consider bringing because it's just sitting there and I'm never going to list it. Uh, I just, I switched from clothing to hard goods and I just don't, I just like hard goods. So, and now I like jewelry. <laughs> so I just keep like buying and then switching categories. And I'm like, oh man, this is not a good idea. This is not a good business model. So don't be like me. Um, I've got piles of everything, but I am going to do some more toy shows. And guess what I found? I found another Goodwill Benz, the lost footage. You guys remember when I lost all the videos and I did a whole bunch of those on uh, whatnot where I would bring totes full of stuff and just sell it from the tote. And it was kind of like an unboxing of 
what I got at the bins and grab and sell at the same time. It was super fun, but I found another tote because I'm reorganizing again. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming to whatnot. If you guys aren't over there, you can uh, join whatnot with my referral link. It is um, linked down in the description and you can get $15 to shop if you use that. So let's talk about this dress. I got totally sidetracked there. Um, and excited about telling you guys about all of the vintage clothes I sold on whatnot. So this is a vintage Laura Ashley dress. And as I was listing it, one of the buttons fell off. So I just put it in the pocket. So even with a missing button, I sold this for $227.50. And this went internationally. So you can see I've got a picture of the tag. I've got pictures of all of the measurements so that the person buying this knows exactly what they are getting. These are vintage plastic horse blow mold string lights. Western, a lot of two strands, 20 horses. So they light up like this and they are vintage. I got these at the Goodwill bins and I sold them for $62 plus shipping. So if you've never been to the Goodwill bins, how you buy things is by weight. So you put it in your cart, they weigh your cart and you pay by the pound. It's awesome. I have Goodwill bins videos and I'm going to show you another big money bolo, something that I sold from my best bins trip ever. And you guys should definitely check out that video if you missed it. But uh, we're going to keep going here and I'm going to tell you about it. So stay tuned. This is a vintage 1999 Fisher Price Briarberry Bear Dresser original inbox. So I got this from, I believe, a garage sale for three bucks. And I bought some other outfits the same day that were Briarberry. Nothing that I was familiar with, but they were new old stock. And I was like, you know, new old stock, I'm going to pick it up, especially for three bucks. I think the other ones were a dollar. And I think those are all sold out. I sold this one for $37 and the buyer paid shipping. And this did take a little longer to sell. So when I say my big money bolos, that is anything that I sold for $35 or more. So you may see some that are just in the like $35 to $40 range, but most of them are a little higher than that. But my cost of goods is really low typically. The next item is this brooch. It's a butterfly brooch. Who knows where I got it or what I paid for it, but I typically pick things up in bulk, so probably not much. Uh, this was one of those where I needed to get some stuff on eBay and I was looking through brooches and I just threw it up on eBay. Not something I would expect to be high dollar. I don't even, I couldn't find any comps, but it did have this on it and it had this. So it was easy for me to just create a title. I listed it high at $80 and just waited on the right buyer to come along. Now, this is going to appeal maybe to somebody that collects this brand or somebody that likes butterflies. I ended up taking a best offer of $40 plus shipping on that. Um, so if I were to sell this on whatnot, I would have started this at $5, probably would have gotten maybe five to 10 for it, depending on who was in the crowd um, that day. And then that person could have listed it on eBay and sold it for 40 like I did. Do you see what I'm saying? So whatnot is a great place to source. People are probably wondering why am I selling my items on whatnot at a cheaper price? Well, the reason I do that is because it is a quick flip. So you're selling a lot of stuff quickly where you don't have the wait time but you're going to make less. A lot of resellers are buying things from me and then flipping them, if that makes sense. So Whatnot and eBay, I have two totally different business models. I know that I talk about listing high and waiting for the right buyer, and I still stand firm on that belief when you are selling on platforms. Now on Whatnot, I have a totally different approach. Everything I sell starts at $5 or less. So um, very, very... Uh, not very often I'll start something higher than five, but it, it doesn't happen much. So, uh, anyway, just to kind of explain a little bit of the differences between whatnot and selling on a platform. Now, if you want to learn how to sell on whatnot, I do have some tutorials, just type in whatnot for beginners and you can check that out. This one, super scary, took forever to sell. I thought when I saw this, oh my goodness, this is going to be a big money bolo. I'm going to sell this for hundreds of dollars. It's Sesame Street. It's vintage. No, didn't happen. 
Um, took forever to sell. I ended up taking a best offer of $40. I don't even remember where I got it. I want to say a thrift store. It is cross stitch and some vintage cross stitch can do very well. And I just thought being that it was Sesame Street and so well done, but I went to ship it and it was glass. And I'm like, oh, please make it, please make it. So I guess it made it because I didn't hear anything, but man, I do not like shipping glass. You guys know me and breakables. This one here is a Disney store talking plush chum shark, 22 inch hand puppet. This one also came from the Goodwill bins and this one was a nice surprise. He um, talks. So you can add a video to your listing. So what you do is you take the video, you add it to your desktop, and then you can add it to your, um, to your listing. Okay. Let me show you here. Maybe right over here. So it's the second thing. And then you just hit play and it shows people how it works. So the important thing about this is, is people are seeing that the item actually functions. Now there is a workaround where you can, and it still had the Disney store, but look at this, you guys, US 1950 Disney store, just because it says $19 and 50 cents, please do not price your item that low if it is new, old stock, retired, all right? I did put used condition, even though it had the tags, because I got this from the Goodwill bins. Obviously, this item is not new. I did not buy it from the store um, and keep it in my house and sell it. I It's not new. So I mark those items used, all right? Now, the thrift stores, they spray down their stuff. I know the one time at our Goodwill bins, everything was still damp and you could smell whatever they spray on it to um, sanitize the items. So that's cool. I'm glad that our Goodwill bins does that. Do you guys, I, I think they all are required to do that. But anyway, I sold it for $68 and 20 cents and the buyer paid shipping. And I was going to tell you about the video. There is a way to do it from your phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. There is a way to do it from your phone. There's a workaround. I've never tried it, but MacPack Reselling has a video that shows you how to do the workaround. So if you don't want to go through um, putting it on your computer and then uploading it, you can uh, watch her video and figure out how, how that works. This is so cute. I got this at a garage sale and it took quite a while to sell. Probably I priced it pretty high. Like I said, man, my throat, Woo. price it high and wait for the right buyer. Got this at a garage sale for a dollar and I sold it for a best offer of 42 plus shipping. So definitely worth the wait. I'm sorry. This little guy is so cute in really nice condition. I probably could have cleaned it up a little and it probably would have, you know, looked a little nicer, but I don't clean anything. I just don't have time. So made in Japan, love it. And vintage Christmas right there. Look how cute that is. The next item is this vintage Paragon needle craft kit. I priced this super high because I couldn't find any comps. I did take a lower offer. Um, I got it for a dollar at a garage sale. And the reason I took a lower offer is because I got it for a dollar at a garage sale. I'm not going to sit on this thing forever. Um, I had high hopes of getting around 125 for it, but I ended up taking a best offer of 70. I was happy with that. I'm sure that the buyer is happy with that. And that's one thing you can always come down on your price. Best offer is your best friend, in my opinion. Here we go with the stickers. So if you missed my I will make thousands video from the Goodwill Benz, you have got to watch it and see how many of these scratch and sniff stickers I found at the Benz. Oh, my goodness. It was the most exciting Benz trip ever. So type in Bolo Buddies. I will make thousands into the YouTube search bar and it should pull it up. And Goodwill Benz probably in the title. But anyway, I sold these here and this one here to the same buyer for $150. So $75 each on these scratch and sniff. Now, what I did learn is they messaged me asking me if I had a certain other sheet. They're like, if you have this other sheet, I will give you $250 to $350 for it. I won't nickel and dime you. I, I, I need this sticker sheet. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had it, <laughs> but I don't. Um, and then they also sent me uh, pictures of some other ones that they needed. And one of them was like a popcorn. Well, 
I didn't have the popcorn one, but apparently these stickers, when people collect them, some of them are on different, um, different colored backgrounds. Some of them say trend. Some of them do not. So different time frames. And this person was looking specifically for the popcorn that looked a certain way and had a certain background. So it was very, very specific. So if you get into scratch and sniff, they are not all created equal. There is a lot of research that you would have to do to really understand it. Basically, for these two, I couldn't find anything like it. So I just listed them really high and waited for the right buyer. So that you'd have to check that video. I'm going to say that's probably been close to two years ago that I uh, won these or won these found these. <laughs> I feel like a winner finding them. I mean, what a huge, huge like bolo. But yeah. All right. So let's go to the next one. This is a vintage ideal doll, blonde hair, green, sleepy eyes, posable, uh, USA made. And I think I got her at the bins also. Yes, I did. And I sold her for a best offer of $42. So one thing I can recommend is if you can get a stand like this, I would display your doll standing up because it really shows more um, detail on the condition. So, and then I just put stand is for display only and is not included, just so people know they're not getting the stand. Okay, so there it is. Pictures of everything. Pretty little eyes, huh? This one is a vintage nativity set fold up figures, Christmas decor made in Japan. I got this out of a thrift store mystery box. And there's your little Japan figures. Conditions vary. Little nativity scene. And I ended up selling this for $55.80, which was my sale price. The next item, I love, love, love this one. I got it at a garage sale for a dollar. So I actually bought, um, it was some electronic thing. And I can't remember if I, if I parted it out or if there was, if the thing didn't work, but this was still sealed. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to price that high because look at that new old stock in the original packaging, never used. Again, it's a long tail item. It's unpunched. It's going to take a while to sell because not everybody has this vintage game or whatever it is, learning device, unpunched. That's because these have not been punched out. So anyway, I ended up selling this for $39 and the buyer paid shipping. So that was a super fun one. This is an autograph art projector tracer and larger drawing artist portable and original box. This came from a white elephant thing at my uh, mother-in-law's. And it is some sort of projector. And we do white elephant every year for Christmas. And this was a couple Christmases ago. So it did take a little while to sell. But would you looky there? I sold that for $37.20. And uh, the buyer paid shipping. So there you have it, guys. Those are my big money bolos. And some of them are pretty fun, I think. So let me know which one surprised you the most. And check out those videos I talked about. Come see me on Whatnot. And uh, check out the description for different affiliates and referrals that I have down there. Those um, help me keep this channel going. And I appreciate it when you guys use them. It doesn't cost you anything. And those are things that I use for my business. List Perfectly, Worth Point poly mailers that I get, uh, bubble wrap, different things that I actually use. So um, if you're looking for things to help you in your business, definitely check that out. I also have some tutorials on the things I use. So check it out. It's um, things that are going to help you run a smooth business. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And thanks for watching.